People who have quit their jobs on the spot, what was the moment when you finally snapped? When I was 17 I worked in a sports shoe store in a mall. I had this manager that would constantly require that we upsell more items to customers and would yell at us if we did not attempt to do so. I had worked there for a few months and had been relatively happy but this manager was always on our case to upsell more and more items as it made the store look good to other stores in our franchise. On afternoon a boy in his late teens, wearing tattered, old, dingy clothes with mismatched shoes that were falling apart walked in very aware that people were looking at him and judging due to his appearance. I greeted him and asked what I could do for him. Timidly, he told me he had a job interview coming up at and needed a new pair of tennis shoes. I showed him a couple of options but he shot them down quickly. I could see we were way out of his price range but somehow he was brave enough to ask if we had anything in the $20 range. This was a place that normally sold Jordans and other $100 plus shoes. I knew we had a couple pairs in the back that had been put away after a clearance sale and were supposed to be shipped back to corporate. I grabbed a few pairs in his size and found a pair that worked for him quickly after. As we head to the register to ring him up. He still has this look on his face that I won't forget. He pulls out a sandwich baggie of worn dollar bills and a bunch of coin change. Now I know it is probably embarrassing for his guide to come into a shopping mall with this on his to-do list so I help count everything behind the counter only to find he is about $0.40 short. I grab some change I had in my pocket and told him not to worry about it. He smiles, thanks me for the help and walks out. My manager came over instantly after and starts to berate me in the front of customers and co-workers about not following store policy and trying to upsell to each and every customer. She watched the whole sale unfold and just couldn't grasp why I would even attempt to sell more thing to this guy. I grabbed my things from the back and walked out only to go back a week later to pick up my last check. I didn't make a scene or anything cool, just walked out. Frick that manager and that place. Good for you man. You made the world a better place for that kid. My father had a heart attack and I asked for some time off or even just a few specific days off a week. I worked part time anyways, so I could make regular trips to my parents house, about an hour and a half away, and help out until he was back on his feet. My manager said you have to decide what's more important, your job or your family. Easiest decision of my life. My dad's doing great BTW. I got hired by the owner of a spa as a manager to help train and clean up the unhygienic practices the aestheticians who were currently working there. They were reusing disposable items like sticks for waxing, nail files and buffers, foam toe separators, sponges for facials and implementing tools like jets and the pedicure baths. Impossible to properly clean. One single metal and plastic foot file for all clients. That would have to be properly disinfected in a bleach bath and then sterilized in an autoclave to be hygienic. But plastic can't go in an autoclave, among so many other things. After discovering these horrifying practices I spent an entire work shift filling up 5 industrial size garbage bags of used disposables and anything that couldn't be used according to hygiene standards. I got rid of almost everything and assembled one time used disposable kits to use on each new client. I had a meeting with the staff and explained how what and why we needed these changes. I stored those garbage bags in the back room until I could bring them out the following morning for garbage collection. There was one aesthetician, an older lady who resented me, and trampled all over the owner because she was efficient in her work despite being extremely unhygienic. When I returned the next morning, all my trash bags were ripped open, crap was everywhere, spilling over into the hallway of the back rooms. It looked like a raccoon tore through them, and then I saw the older lady using all these disgusting used products on a client. I demanded she stop and come back so I could give her a fresh client kit. She refused and kept working on the client, so I called up the owner and explained what happened. He didn't give a crap, said she was being cost effective. I told him I'm leaving and that I could not work for a place who could be so negligent as to endanger the public like this. Obviously, they got shut down a few months later. My grandmother had been coming for Easter. I requested off 3 months in advance, got it approved. 3 days before I'm told I absolutely must work Easter, or I'll lose my job. Nope, have fun being short staffed because you aren't replacing me in time, bye. I quit a part time job when my idiot of a manager changed the schedule on Wednesday so I was scheduled to work on Thursday, 
which was a night I had made clear I couldn't work due to my full time job. Of course he doesn't tell me he changed the schedule. I get home Thursday, dead tired, and pour myself a glass of wine and settle in for my first quiet evening in ages. And the phone rings. It's the idiot of a manager's boss asking why I wasn't at work. So I pull out my copy of the schedule and tell him exactly when I was scheduled to work. He asks so, are you coming and I paused as if I was considering it, then answered no, I'm quitting. Zero regrets. I found out that the owner of a Quiznos had been rounding my hours down on my paychecks and when I confronted her about it she blowed it off and said I was making way too big a deal over some $40. Then she said, the Pepsi order isn't going to put itself away, you know. I went out to the front of the store just as people started to line up for the lunch rush and I took my apron off and left. Halfway to the door the store manager caught up to me and we left together and the store owner only caught onto it as she saw us leaving the parking lot. $40 isn't a big deal, then you shouldn't have a problem getting me my $40. I had just started working at a secure psychiatric facility for emotionally disturbed children at the start of the summer, end of May. At the interview I told the HR person that I had a pre-planned trip home for later in the summer and that since I was driving I was going to be away for two weeks. I hadn't been home to see my family for two years. I made it clear to her that if this was going to be a problem to let me know right then and I would seek employment elsewhere. She reassured me it wouldn't be a problem and that she would leave a note in my file saying as much. So the time for my trip nears. I give them the two weeks notice as agreed upon at the interview but my immediate supervisor refuses to approve the time off. Figuring it was a miscommunication I tell the immediate super about the interview agreement with HR. That the issue was already settled at the initial interview. So she gives me this run around and asks me to give her a couple of days to come up with a solution. Next day she calls me into her office and has the balls to say okay. I know how we can work this. You can work a double shift on sat. 18 hours mind you. Then leave for home right after and make your drive. 30 hours non-stop. Visit your family for 3 days then drive back. 30 hours non-stop. And arrive in time to work another double. I couldn't stop myself. I laughed uncontrollably. I asked her if she was seriously suggesting I stay awake for 48 hours straight. 30 of those spent on highways crossing the country. She just gave me this stupid smile and said yes, you can do it. You have a responsibility to the center. I laughed in her face and told her I wouldn't work for such a cesspool. A place that would dare suggest I put my personal safety in harm's way and wouldn't honor an agreement made. I quit in the spot. I was still scheduled for the rest of that week. They had the nerve to call me at home that night asking if I was coming in. I told the person who called no way in heck and I told him what happened. Then the super called me and basically said I had to come in. I was scheduled. I suggested she could cover my shift. I mean she already worked 9 hours. What was another 18? She could do it. I left for my trip the next day. Nothing serious. I was hired at a company and was promised 13.50 an hour. Well first check came and it was for 13. Told my supervisor. Second and third check came and nothing changed. Went to my manager both times. We got paid every fortnight. When I got my fifth check and I saw nothing had changed I just quit on the spot. Report them to the Department of Labor. They take wage theft extremely seriously. I was hired as a janitor at a movie theater when I was a teenager. I found out that everyone who was hired the week before me were being paid $1 more an hour. I was getting glowing reviews, because I was actually doing my job and working hard, rather than slacking off like most every one of those other kids. So I asked the manager if I could get a raise to get paid evenly with them. I was told tough luck. It was the end of my shift, and I never came back. I was scheduled for full time the next week, but I didn't answer my phone when they called asking where I was, and left for a road trip with a buddy instead. You should have answered the phone and told them tough luck, and hang up. I'm a nanny. The mom I was working for was an absolute nutcase. I loved all four children and they loved me dearly. I spent 50 hours a week at their house. On top of taking care of all four and making sure they were all at their 500,000 extracurricular activities and constantly entertained she insisted her giant home be cleaned by me and all six people's laundry be done every single day. 
she liked the bins to be completely empty. I kept up with it. After a while she got more and more demanding, even leaving her dishes out after breakfast for me to clean. I talked to them about how my only responsibility should be the kids. They agreed. A couple weeks later she went back to her old self and was texting me after work no more than 10 minutes after I'd get out the door about dust and other petty things. I told her she needed to stop and reminded her about the conversation we had. She blew up and said if I didn't do better they'd have to find someone else. I drove straight to her house and dropped her car seats off out front. I never went back and I blocked her number. I miss the kids and hate that I couldn't say bye but I don't regret it at all. I quit on the spot from a Verizon call center but not for the reason you would think. I had a call where a guy wanted a cheaper plan and wanted it now. I did some number crunching so I could tell the guy exactly what his weird partial plan bill would look like since he was changing his plan in the middle of his billing cycle and things will look weird on the next bill. I do the math and change the plan and the guy was super happy. I feel good about being able to solve his issue. Fast forward I get a failed survey from the guy. Now in my call center that means your pay gets docked. I listen to his recorded feedback and he is freaking out because he's angry he got a survey. That had nothing to do with me or how I helped him so I sent it to QA asking them to overturn it so my pay doesn't get affected. They listened to the call and said my fail was valid because I had one part in my call where I was quiet for 30 seconds. While doing math, I couldn't talk and crunch all the numbers. That was my last straw among a lot of other crap so I rage quit. They asked if I wanted to finish my day first. I gave them my badge and left. Frick that. Frick Verizon. TL. DR. Got a failed survey in a call center for a customer complaining about getting a survey and they said my fail was valid so I quit. I shudder when I think of all the people that have worked for Alorica Verizon call centers. I was a team manager and saw people quit fire nearly on a daily basis. I was working as a software developer for a company that, shall we say didn't understand the value of its IT team. I could go on and on about the crap we had to put up with there. One day my direct boss, the only person in senior management who could tell his ball sack from a computer, who had personally hired all of us, and was our shield against the shit show of the rest of the company, told our team he was leaving. So we all were on edge. I had been promised a sizable performance bonus in lieu of a raise, because the CEO was a cheap piece of crap and I was planning on quitting anyway so I figured whatever. When my performance review came up, I wrote up a spreadsheet detailing how I had fulfilled every aspect of my bonus requirements, and I emailed it to my new supervisor. I didn't get a response. So I went into his office Friday morning and asked about it. He said that before they could give me the bonus. I had to provide detailed documentation and training on all the code and work I'd done for the past year, because they couldn't guarantee I wouldn't just walk out the second I got my money. I told him they could either pay me the money they owed me for the work I'd done to date, which was the agreement, and I would do everything in my power to make sure they could continue if and when I left, or I could walk out at that moment and leave them with nothing. And I did exactly that. The entire dev team quit over the next 6 months. I wouldn't be surprised if he was planning on firing you once you'd finished the training in lieu of paying the bonus. I worked at a grocery store as a bagger and they asked me to clean a destroyed bathroom. I mean crap everywhere. All over the toilet, the walls, the freaking ceiling. Anyways I said this is not worth my minimum wage and left. Worst part is my friend got me the job there and they saved it for him to clean the next day. He quit on the spot also. On a Monday morning, after my and my team's paycheck had been two weeks late, for like I hundredth time, I asked the boss if he had wired the money at all, as he had a habit of lying that he did, only to wire it days later, to which he responded with we don't freaking start a freaking work week with such questions, we start it with freaking reports from the week before, frick him. I worked for a local target in electronics. A store manager who was not my direct manager called me at my father's funeral to ask where I was and why I wasn't at the electronics boat, cash register. Days earlier I had told my manager that I wouldn't be there because I had to attend my father's funeral, was told it was okay. But this other manager just wasn't having it and explained to me that she was in the store the same day her child was born. I have never worked for a more ignorant and inept manager was a server in a crappy restaurant where the owner's kids were managers and had no prior work experience. 
One kid set up a deal with a bank for a private party, and I ended up just serving and bartending for this group of 20-30 my entire shift. Comes time for them to pay the hill, and the manager that set up the special deal, it was a limited menu but for a huge discounted set price, wasn't there, so the manager that was there assumed the previously discussed amount included tip. 20% minimum on groups of 8 or more, it did not, so after closing out, I was informed that due to their miscommunication, I would not be receiving any money at all, Marizo, because I served many of the patrons alcohol I had to tip as the bartender at the main bar, even though I actually bartender by myself at the wine bar, so this little shat wanted me to pay something like $150 at the end of a full shift, walked out and never went back. Place crap down a few months later, to the surprise of no one. Worked at a petland in high school. They didn't take very good care of the animals. A vet visited once a week, but if anything happened in the meantime there was no taking them anywhere. I only worked there about a month. I opened with the manager one day and two lovebirds had gotten in a fight overnight. One lost a foot. My manager took it to the back, put it in a small cage and put a towel over it. I kept asking when the vet was coming and my manager kept brushing it off. By midday it was apparent they were just going to let it die. Out of sight. Out of mind. They finally said the vet would be in in 3 days like it was no big deal. I cried. Ran out and never went back. I've told everyone I've known since then how awful they are. In hindsight I wish I would have done more, but team me didn't have the backbone I do now. Pet stores are awful places, and petlands are the worst of them all. I've never seen a pet store in my life that actually gives you proper and correct care advice for the animal they're selling you. It's always the minimum possible care to not look bad or be called out on animal abuse. Pallet of packs of bottled water toppled over, pinning me against a wall. Managed to get my radio and ask from someone to come out the back and help me immediately. 15 minutes later I get assistance, not from the staff mind you, someone coming in to start their shift. Hauling pallets is meant to be a two person job but in the four years I was on delivery it was almost always just me. Oh, and I only got put on delivery because the guy who was doing it before popped the end of his little finger off when a poorly stacked pallet caught his hand between a door and the stock. I would have filed a report with OSHA, they love reasons like that to do a surprise safety inspection. In fact, assuming this wasn't a million years ago, you probably still can. The paychecks kept bouncing, I'm not talking oh, crap, sorry, here's your money, type of thing. It was a small business, so the first time I just figured he forgot to make a deposit into the payroll account. He kept blaming the bank, eventually just told me to take it out of the register. The other two employees didn't get paid. Next check, the next guy was able to take money out of the register, but myself and the third guy couldn't because the money just wasn't in the register. The store needed to pull in 10k mo to be profitable, and we barely pulled in 2k. He didn't advertise, didn't get us parts, we were a cell phone repair store in a Walmart, and wouldn't let us do what needed to be done to grow the store. Eventually the manager had it and just walked out, so I got stuck watching the store while the owner worked out the payroll issues. My GF at the time lived in Nashville and I lived in NC. She was pregnant and got into some sort of accident, so I booked a trip out there. When I returned to NC, I didn't even bother answering their calls. Never got a final check. They deleted my hours from the payroll system, and I had proof of this, and reported them. The state sided with them because I couldn't prove I actually worked those hours. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.